आई गेस वी हैव टू गिव अ डेली डी बी चैलेंज राइट सो गाइज अ क्विक चैलेंज फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ आई हैव गिवन दिस चैलेंज टू ऑल ऑफ यू अर्लियर बट वॉट चेंजेस विल यू मेक इन साइड दी ऑर्कल डेटा बेस इन ऑर्डर टू अवॉइड और अ वन ट्रिपल फाइव एर आई मीन आई वुड लाइक टू नो योर कमेंट्स एंड मीन वाइल लेट एस स्टार्ट दी शो All right guys welcome back to this new episode of Daily DBA show I highly encourage you all to still send me your queries to support at dbagenesis.com I love your questions I am trying my best to answer as many questions as possible and meanwhile let us start our today's episode with the first question of the day When is the best time to gather table schema stats What do you think guys See the gather stats I actually asked this question I gave you all a debate challenge in one of the previous episodes and I asked you this question will you gather stats for a table for which there has been no data change for years and I think the correct answer to that question was like you don't need to gather stats if there is no change inside the database now to answer this question when is the best time to gather table schema stats the best time is whenever you make data load so whenever you have heavy data load inside the database or table or the schema then you probably perform the uh, gather stats right that's fair enough now one important thing which i want to make let's take your database is having a table where you store temporary data and remove it within 24 hours okay so there is a table where the data resides only for 24 hours and or less than 24 hours if that sort of stuff is going on then you should not gather stats for those kind of tables it's of no use all right but if you have a big table where data is being stored like your transactions and then there is a heavy data load inside the table that point of time you will be gathering stats for that particular table that being said i think uh, one important thing guys i want you all to know that let's take your copying data from another table to one table right do you know that you can actually copy the stats i mean the statistics of the data from the source table to the target table also now i'll actually i can give you the answer but i would want you all to put down the package name which we use to copy the stats i think i already gave you a hint while i was asking you the question but any which was I would want to know from you all like what exactly is the package name that we use in order to copy the stats from the source table to the target table all right so two important things in case if you have heavy data load inside the table that point of time you will be gathering the stats for the table and the second let's take your copying data from one table source table to target table then you can also copy the stats so that you don't have to gather the stats on the target system that being said let's move on to the next question what is your recommendations on db block size for oltp and data warehouse systems so guys keep this thing very simple very normal like 16 kb block size is good enough or 32 kb is also good enough or 4 kb is good enough but if you personally ask me i would still choose 8 kb block size the reason being i think that's the standard and that's the recommendation i personally recommend to all the uh, clients now guys one important thing you have to notice over here see if you have big data block size let's take 16 kb or 32 kb that point of time when you compress the data blocks you will see like a huge compression value right so you will see like a great compression being done by oracle and you feel like wow we have compressed the a data blocks or the data and then you kind of like that's a good good to have feeling like the compression machine will work well on big data size uh, alternatively when your data block size is very small let's take 4 kb and then you are trying to compress the data inside the data blocks it's hard to compress within those 4 kb block size right now in that sense like compression will not be a good idea or it will not give you a good advantage when the data block size is very small but alternatively if the data block size is very big 16 kb 32 kb then the compression will seem i mean it will look like it's doing an amazing job right so all in all i mean 
I actually gave you an example how compression works based on different block size. For a normal database, any kind of database, whether it is uh, OLTP or data warehouse, I think for data warehouse, I might choose 16 KB block. And I don't know why, but it depends on what is the average row length and other stuff. But on a normal note, if you want me to configure any system, I blindly go with 8 KB blocks. I think that's the standard. And actually guys, it gets the job done. There is no uh, thinking that we need to involve or there's no uh, analysis that we have to do for the database system. You just choose the default uh, 8KB block size and then move on. So my recommendation for OLTP or any kind of database, I would go with 8KB block. But in certain cases, if it is data warehouse system, then I might go with 16KB blocks, right? That's my standards or that's what I follow as a uh, thumb rule for block size inside the database. That being said, let's move on to the next question. Difference between Oracle 10G and 11G. I'm not sure who asked you this question because uh, it's the time for 18C, 19C and 12C also. So why would someone ask you the difference between 10G and 11G? One reason being you projected like seven, eight years of Oracle DB experience and probably that's the reason you got this question in your interview, right? So if that's the case, I mean, I wouldn't want to answer this question because there are a hell lot of content on Google. You just type difference between 10G and 11G, you will get the answer. But I would like to talk about the difference between 11G and 12G because that's more important. Now guys, uh, most of you or most of the DBAs think that Oracle 12C multi-tenant architecture is kind of like a default for Oracle 12C. Yes, in a way yes and in a way no. So like how you have Oracle 11G database, you can still configure the 12C database exactly as 11G database without utilizing the features of multi-tenant architecture. So as a DBA, it's up to you that whether you want to use the multi-tenant architecture or not. But for your kind information, Oracle has de-supported non-multi-tenant architecture. So in case if you are using 12C, 18C, 19C in non-multi-tenant architecture, then Oracle will not provide you support. So Oracle forces you to use the multi-tenant architecture, which has been introduced from the version Oracle 12C, right? So 11G, 12C, you can use, I mean 12C, yeah. You can use 12C exactly as 11G if you are not creating a container database, right? But ultimately with 12C, you have multi-tenant architecture and what this architecture does is it allows you to create a big container and it allows you to create small databases which are known as pluggable databases, PDBs inside one big container. The beauty is each PDB acts as an independent database and for the outside world or for the application, it looks like it's an independent database. Like application cannot tell whether it is connected to PDB or a normal standalone database like 11G. That's the beauty. So I think uh, I would suggest you, I mean you guys, to read about difference between 11G and 12C and then 12C and 18C and then 18C and 19C. That will help you to kind of like uh, face these kind of questions in interviews. But for 10G and 11G, I believe like there is a lot of content already on Google. You can check that over there. That being said, let's move on to the next question. My database archive space gets full every week. I have to remove archives manually. Armin, delete, archive log, all, any workaround. See, if your archive destination is getting full every week, the thing is, first of all, I would like to check or see the archive log backup command. Now, what I believe you are trying to take the archive log backups, but you are not using the clause that is backup archive log all delete input this delete input clause what it does is whenever Armin is taking backup of the archive logs from the source location it will continue to delete those archives from the source location now when you just type backup archive log all what happens is it will only take the backup of the archive logs but it won't perform the cleanup so you as a DBA will have to go and delete those archive logs on the disk 
right? That being said, I mean, I believe it in your case, the problem that you're having is you're not using the delete input clause while backing up the archive logs. Rest all looks fine. So for your question, I would want to see your backup. I'm in the archive log backup command. And based on that, I can say whether or what's the workaround that you have to follow. That being said, let's move on to the last question of the day. What are wait events inside Oracle database? Guys, wait events, I mean, you have to understand the strategy behind how a query works. So, and then I'll talk about what is or what are wait events inside Oracle database. When you look at a query, to execute a query, I mean, there are different stages and at every stage, one process or the previous step is waiting for the other step to complete or uh, to get a result from the other step. For example, let's say when the user issues a query, right? Query goes to the instance. Now instance is it, of course, there are a lot of wait events, but I'm trying to keep it simple for all of you to understand. So instance will wait for data to be fetched from the database, right? Now database will wait for the storage, like the hard disk to get or to pull the data blocks out of the hard disk, right? So every stage is waiting for the other stage to complete its task. Now, when Oracle is performing any kind of operation inside the database, each step or each process will wait for one or the other step, right? And that is how the amount of time that one step or one stage waits for the other stage is known as wait events because it has caused some kind of waiting for one process, right? Now this waiting is known as wait events inside the Oracle database. Now, how do you tackle wait events is a complete different science. It depends which wait class it belongs to. So all the wait events inside the database are divided into wait classes. So it's not true that you have to act on each and every wait class. For example, if the hard disks that your storage team is using, it is the traditional hard disk, it is not a solid state drive that is SSD, then definitely the traditional hard disk will be slow compared to SSDs. So anytime if there is an IO wait event inside the Oracle database, which is waiting for your hard disk to read the data, I think you can't do anything or you can't do much about it, right? So the only way to tackle some of the wait events is to change the underlying infrastructure. Now, most of the times this is not actually the feasible solution or your client might not approve for these kind of solutions. So every wait event belongs to a wait class and you as a DBA will have to understand which wait class you should work on and which wait events you can fix. Some wait events will be always out of your scope because let's take if there is a network level wait event, you can only do a marginal improvement until unless you change the uh, like your network cable to fiber optics it won't uh, like you won't see a drastic gain inside the database wait events now that being said guys one way to learn about wait events because i know a lot of you might also be having this question how to learn about wait events i would actually ask you to first learn about wait classes wait classes is more important than wait events so first you understand wait classes and get to know which weight class you as a DBR are allowed to work on. You, I mean, drill down into those weight classes and inside those weight classes, you look at the weight events and then find the solution to the problem, right? I think that's it guys. I had these questions for this episode. Meanwhile, I guess we have to move on to the most exciting part and that is the bonus question. Welcome back guys. So guys, uh, there's no bonus question by the way, but I have a small observation in terms of how Oracle DBA interviews are conducted. So let me tell you this internal secret. You know what? Most of the times the interviewers will ask you stupid questions because even they do not know the answers. So what they try to do is uh, like most of the interviewers, uh, they will be asking you questions which they don't know answer to 
just because if they get answered they will believe like you are a smart dba and they'll hire you like i think i i know this strategy most of the dbas or the interviewers will follow the same strategy it's a funny thing and uh, because see guys i want to share one of my uh, long back interviews i would not actually want to name the person so this guy took my interview in uh, one of the companies where i was working way back uh, probably in 2013 uh, maybe so in that company what happened you know in the interview uh, period he asked me a couple of questions and he was asking me how confident are you uh, in terms of oracle architecture and he said how how much rating will you give uh, yourself out of 10 when it comes to oracle architecture and i said uh, 10 on 10 so i think it got on his ego and he literally threw the pen and he said uh, oh you give yourself 10 on 10 okay uh, tell me this tell me this tell me this he started asking all the questions and uh, i was generous enough i answered all the questions yep uh, as far as i remember regarding the oracle architecture i answered each and every single question eventually to cut it short i was selected in the project and later on we became good friends the guy who took my interview and once we were on a break uh, probably after 2 3 months he shared this thing with me saying like hey arun you know what uh, i asked you so many questions in uh, related to oracle architecture by the way uh, even i didn't know uh, most of the answers <laughs> and i was like uh, wow that seems like a complete flip story uh, when it comes to interviews so guys all the interviewers who take your interview uh, doesn't mean that if they are asking you a question even they know the answers they are just testing you probably sometimes they want to see if you can give them the answer uh, their knowledge will increase i think that's how the current world works that being said guys i'll take a leave and i'll meet you all in the next episode bye